Talk to him. Next segment, we're going to go to our pick the winner segment. This is where we will select the winner of each game. We will not do the Thursday night game as we are recording on Thursday. I would have had the Patriots. I would imagine, Kyle, you would have had the Patriots as well. Sunday, the first game on the, on the slate, we have... Kyle, perfect. We have the Indianapolis Colts, who are 5-5 five and five on the year, facing the Buffalo Bills, who are 6-3 and three on the year. The Bills, they are seven-point favorites at home, 49-and-a-half is the over-under. Uh, the total has gone over in six of the Colts' last seven games on the road. However, the total has gone under in four of the Colts' last five games against Buffalo. In Buffalo, they are 10-1 and one straight up in their last 11 games at home. They are very tough to beat at home. So with that said, Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, so this one, this one's going to be hurt for me to say, but I'm, I'm going to go the Bills, uh, unfortunately. Um, I, I, like you just said, it's just so hard to play in Buffalo, man. Um, the Colts haven't been the best away team this year so far. And, and yeah, and I just think the Bills will be the, the better team here. And I'm going to go Bills. All right, brother, I'm going to shoot you some bail, man. I'm going the other way. I'm going with hey. the Indianapolis Colts. Yes, uh, they are not a great uh, they are not a great road team this year, but one thing they can do, they can run the ball and they can play defense. And when you can do that, when you can run the ball against the Bills who absolutely cannot run the ball. I mean, honestly, these two teams, they're they're almost the, watch this word, I've been learning something. They're the antithesis of one another. Oh, look at okay? you. Okay, look at me, man. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on my Stephen A, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so the Colts, they, they love to run the ball. They love to play defense. The Bills, they cannot run the ball. Uh, their defense has gotten better uh, over the last few weeks, but I just I just feel like the Colts can slow down the Bills potentially, um, and they're able to run the ball, control the clock, do those type of things where you know it can it can possibly frustrate the Buffalo Bills. So uh, you know seven point spread at home with the Bills, I definitely think the Colts cover that, and I have the Colts winning this game. Talk to him. Next, we have the Washington football team who are three and six on the year playing the new, new look Carolina Panthers uh, with Cam Newton as a as a projected starter there. The Panthers, they are five and five on the year and they are three point favorites at home. Forty three and a half is the over under in this game. Washington, they are five and two against the spread in their last seven games on the road against Carolina. Carolina, they are four and one straight up in their last five home games against Washington. And the total has gone under in five of Carolina's last six home games, as well as it has gone under in four of Washington's last five games overall. Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yes, sir. So this one, this one's going to be an interesting. I think this is going to be a very, very good game. Um, both these teams are coming off of really big wins. Washington over the Bucks and um, Panthers over the Cardinals. Two high-quality teams that they beat. Saying that, I think... Now, I, anytime I go against Washington, it seems like they really prove me wrong. But I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to go the Panthers. The reason, just the reason for it, Cam Newton, man. He's back. He's um, He didn't play. He was on a team this whole year, right? Before this? Before he got Yeah, up? no, no. Yeah, he yeah, had, so, yeah last hey, week was his first game. Hey, you, so you're going to tell me that Cam Newton is going to be one of the freshest guys in the NFL coming in week true, 11. Hey, true. Man, that's, that's scary. That's scary. I'm going to go Panthers. I think Cam Newton... <laughs> If he ain't start this game, I guarantee he'll be a starter after this. I'm riding with you there. I think he will be the starter here. I think Matt Rule said they are, quote, unquote, trending for Cam Newton to be the starter. So I'm riding with that. Um, this is a divisional game, if I'm not. No, it's not. Uh, Washington's in the NFC East and then Carolina's the NFC South. Uh, but with that being said, this is the Ron Rivera and Cam Newton game. Ooh. Remember that Ron Rivera is, the, yes, the head coach of Washington and obviously Cam with the Panthers. Um, so Rivera is coming back to the Panthers. He obviously knows that franchise, knows that team. Um, I just feel like Panthers coming off of that great win they had last week. And the juice that they showed. I don't know if fans or Kyle, you saw any of those clips, any of those highlights. My man. The Panthers are flying around. I'm telling you, man, Superman may be back because he brought some extra juice. And I think the Washington football team, Cam Newton, may be their kryptonite. Uh, they may not have an answer for Cam Newton and what he can do. And like you said, he he's the freshest guy in the NFL right now. He hasn't been hit in the last three or four months. So you let him heal up a little bit. You let him be rested like the way he is. And like he said, he's back. Now he's got to prove it. And I think he does it this week again against the Washington football team. Give me the Carolina Panthers. 
Talk to them. Next, Baltimore Ravens, who are 6-3 and three on the year. They are six-point favorites on the road against the Chicago Bears. 45-and-a-half is the over-under. Baltimore, they are 15-5 and five straight up in their last 20 road games, which is amazing. And the total has gone under in six of Chicago's last eight games. The total has also gone under in 17 of Chicago's last 23 home games. And the total has also, also gone under in six of Baltimore's last seven road games. So Kyle, let's pick the winner. Hmm. This one's going to be interesting. This one's very interesting. Um, my gut feelings tell me to go to the Ravens. Um, Bears coming off a bye week, though. So they did have an extra week to prepare. All right. And, and preparation and film and all that stuff. I mean, these are humans. I mean, that's legit. You know what I'm saying? That is legit. Saying that, Ravens come off a loss to the Dolphins, which was super shock, shocking. Because uh, unless you're Terrence, you know, then he actually calls that, which is mind blowing. But True. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but saying that, hey, Lamar's got got. I don't, it's tough for me to say Lamar's got something to prove because he really doesn't have anything to prove. He's Lamar freaking Jackson. But he just came off of um, you know getting his his jersey retired at Louisville. Um, there's a lot of momentum, and I feel like in just his life as a person, I'm gonna go Ravens big on this one. Um, yeah, taking down the Bears and Soldier Field. I didn't know Baltimore in the last 20 road games. They won 15 of them. So Yeah, that, that's impressive. <laughs> that, that, that is. And also, that just speaks to the type of franchise this, this team is. You know, there, there are certain teams in the NFL, in the NBA, in, the, in all across sports in general where they just have it an identity Kyle and the and the Ravens have an identity the Bears they have somewhat of an identity but the one identity they do not have which I think Justin Fields he's starting to change that is their offense and their quarterback they never have been great there I think with the Ravens they always play defense clearly they can run the ball now they'll be down a few weapons uh, but they have arguably the best weapon in all of football with with Lamar Jackson so I really wanted to honestly take the Bears because I feel like they will play strong at home. Um, and I'm contemplating fans. I, I really am. But I mean, Kyle, I'm going to say this. Ravens win the game. Chicago easily, easily cover this game. If that makes any sense at all. Yeah, but I, no. I just got to I just got I, I think it'll be one of those games where, you know, surprisingly, I think the Bears will be up, you know, especially early in the game. Um, and then I think Lamar putting on his cape, uh, you know, doing Lamar type of things. Fourth quarter, I think he pulls it out late, especially coming off of that loss. But I, I, I think the Bears definitely cover. And in another universe, I could definitely see the Chicago Bears winning this game. Talk to him. All right, next, I'm going to make this one quick, man. Uh, the Detroit Lions, who are 0-8-1. Yes. One one is the loneliest number, they say, and that is lonely. Uh, they are playing the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Cleveland, they are 5-5 five and five on the year, coming off of that nasty loss last week to the Patriots. Uh, the Browns, however, I want you to guess how much of a favor they are in this game. Browns at home, winless Lions. There's no way they are less than 10-point favorites. Yep, you hit it on the hey, nose. Hey, Ten point favorites. There you go, my man. <laughs> and forty five points is the over under. Uh, Detroit. They are four and one straight up in their last five games against Cleveland. Check that out. Uh, Cleveland. They are thirteen and five straight up in their last eighteen home games. The total has gone over in four of Cleveland's last five games when they play Detroit. However, the total has gone under in six of the Lions' last seven games overall. Kyle, let's pick the winner. All right, man. So first off, I want to say, give a clap up and a round of applause. The Lions did not lose. They nice, did not nice. lose. Right, I'm going to add a sound game. effect right there. Yes, right there. <laughs> Have a clap. There we go. <laughs> hey, Lions did not lose. Now, saying that, hey, all this OBJ controversy that was going on, man, I mean, it, the 45 is 7 to the Patriots, who I do believe the Patriots are a good team. All right. I didn't think they were 45 to 7 beating the Browns good team yet. You know, so that that worries me a little bit saying that I'm going to go the Browns just because I haven't lines haven't won yet, man. I mean, until they prove me wrong, until they give me a one in my losing record, um, I'm going to keep picking against them. I still want I want them to win. I think they could win. I don't think they will win. Cleveland Browns at home. Take this stuff. That's a great pick, man. Um, you know, for me, 
and I'm going to make this quick, but it's either do the Lions win this week or do they win four days from Sunday on Thanksgiving, which is our Super Bowl. When I say our, yeah. any, fan, any fan of the Lions, that is our Super Bowl, uh, that, that Thanksgiving game where we play a, our divisional I don't know if you say rival, but definitely a divisional foe in the Chicago Bears on Thanksgiving. Uh, I think this is a scheduling loss for the Lions. And what do I mean by that? Uh, Lions are coming off of a road game in Pittsburgh, which was a, a long overtime game. Obviously, it ended in a tie. And now they're about to be on the road again in Cleveland. And then four days from Sunday, as mentioned, they'll be playing Thursday night at home. So this game is crunched in between. You know, some tough games for them. It's already against a tough opponent. And honestly, I'm a Lions fan, but I'd be a fool to pick them to win any of these games like this, especially on the road. So give me the Cleveland Browns at home. Easy dub. Talk to them. Next game, we have the San Francisco 49ers, who are 3-5 and five on the year. Just came off of that impressive win against the L.A. Rams at home. The 49ers, they are six-point favorites on the road against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are two and seven on the year. Wow, they have two more wins than my Lions. That is embarrassing. They do. Is that real? Are they two and seven? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, bro. Oh, man. Yeah, um, for- I'll just say they beat the Bills and they beat the – who else was it? Did I read that wrong? Who was yeah, it? Yeah, they, they, yep, they're two and seven, man. They beat – they beat the Bills. The Dolphins. Bills and the Dolphins. And the Dolphins. Wow, fam. It's embarrassing. All right. Um, <laughs> 47 points is the over under. Couple trends here. San Francisco, they are four and one straight up in their last five road games. They're also four and one against the spread in their last five games against the Jaguars. The total has gone under in seven of Jacksonville's last eight games overall, as well as the total has gone under in four of the last five home games for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, so this one, this one's going to be interesting, man. Um, Now, the funny about the Jags is I really don't think they are as bad as people think. Okay, I might get, I might get, um, you know, talked about for for that opinion, but I really don't think they're as bad as as they seem. They've had a lot of drama, a lot of outside noise, a lot of things going on um, that I think have affected them for sure, especially, you know, with the whole urban and all that stuff. But I think that's in the past. I think they are going up from here. Um, 49ers come off a really big win versus the Rams. Um, the Jags, they, I mean, they only lost to the Colts by a touchdown. Um, you know, something's telling me I'm going to go with my gut. I don't do many upsets. I'm going to go with the Jags here. I think I'm going to pick the Jags over the 49ers. Mm. Um, I think I'm going to take the home team in here. 49ers have been just so back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes yeah. you're like, wow. Sure. You know, there's like, sometimes you're like, wow, you know, this could be a good team. Other times it's like, why is, how is this team in the NFL? You know what I'm saying? So saying that, I'm going to pick the home team on here. I'm going to get this upset. And I'm actually going to pick the Jaguars to beat the 49ers. You know what? I'm going to ride with you, my man. Ooh, I'm gonna ride okay. with you, bro. Yeah, like I, you made all the points. I feel like the Jaguars, they can def. I feel like when they when they see the 49ers on the schedule, especially after the win on Monday night when the entire world saw the 49ers played it with their hairs on fire against the Rams, I feel like the Jaguars feeling like, hey, the 49ers are now coming to our crib down in Duval County. Shout out to Duval oh. County, Duval. <laughs> I, I, I feel like the Jags, man, like. You know, they beat the Bills early this year. So they ain't scared of nobody. Like, and they really, listen, this is a cliche in sports, but for the Jags, Kyle, they have nothing to lose, literally. Yeah. Like, who cares if they lose? Honestly, exactly. right? And, and again, they're at home against the 49ers who are flying high after last week. Like, you know, I'm all about the up and down, you know, and especially, you know, here in the, in the NFL season, like I, I was listening to the Bill Simmons podcast and uh, Warren Sharp was on. I don't know if you know who Warren Sharp is. Oh, yeah. Do you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he, yeah. So you know how how potent he is with the information. So he was just saying, man, like it's hard for teams to cover because you know just so many different variables that are happening this year, and you know home teams actually, ironically enough, haven't done really well. But I just feel like the Jags being at home, being in the comfort of their own beds, and being able to roll up, you know, Sunday morning and realize, hey, we about to, we get the chance to really. Not shock the world, but we get a chance to play at home and beat a team that 
you know, is coming off of a great win. So I'm rolling with you there, man. I'm all over the Jags. Uh, I feel like they can do a lot of good things in this game. And I feel like they can rattle the 49ers. And Jimmy G, good one week, bad the next, man. You do not know what you're going to get from Jimmy G. It's just, that is what it is, man. Uh, so I'm rolling with you. Give me the Jags. And uh, we both be rooting for them boys on Sunday. Talk to him. All right, next. Both of our number one team in our power rankings, the Green Bay Packers, who are eight and two on the season. They are two and a half point favorites on the road against divisional foe Minnesota Vikings. Vikings, they are four and five on the year. 49 and a half is the over under for this game. Green Bay in their last five road games, they are five and zero against the spread. And they're also five and zero against the spread in their last five games overall. And the total has gone under in four of Minnesota's last five home games, as well as the total has gone under in Minnesota's last seven games at home against the Packers. Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, when I when I think of the Vikings, I think of just average. Like, I don't know why, like just everything about them, their pass game, their run game, their defense, their record. I feel like they are the middle of the pack in the NFL, just when you're looking at a team like that. Um, number one, they're my number one power rankings. I'm, I'm going to go with A-Rod and the Packers. I think they're they're going to cover for this as well. I don't think it's going to be a 10-point cover, but I think they can cover two and a half points for sure. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go Packers on that one. Yeah, you know, the Vikings are one of those teams. I think they're going to look back at the end of the year, Kyle, and be like, that we tricked off a lot of games. Like, yeah. if they don't make the playoffs, it's going to be like, you know, we should have won three or four more games than what we actually did. And I think this game somehow, some way will be one of those games. I, I think I got a feeling the Vikings play really, really hard at home. Um, I'm almost inclined to take them. But, you know, I, I I wouldn't be a guy that that was true of myself. If I put the Packers in my number one power ranked team, I can't have them now the next, you know, that week lose on the road against the Minnesota Vikings, who are four and five in the year. You know, just a team that you cannot trust. And that haven't been consistent and, and haven't proved anything. I don't know if Dalvin Cook played last game. Correct uh, me. He did. he did. He did. Okay. He's on my okay. fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, it really will. It's going to be a very exciting game, too, man. I, I'm definitely going to be tuning in on this one. Hopefully, I get this one on the tube. Um, but with that all being said, I, I have to go Packers. I have to, man. Uh, but this will be a very – I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings win this game, Kyle. I would not. You know what I mean? So, um, but I got Aaron Rodgers on my side. I got Devontae Adams. Uh, I, I think Aaron Jones may be out here, but I like what uh, what Dylan, what Dylan provides that running back. Man, he's a big yeah. boy. And I actually remember him when I was out on the East Coast years ago. Uh, he was a running back, high school running back in, uh, in the Boston area. He was just tearing it up, bro. So <laughs> imagine him at that size, literally in high school. That's like legit so uh <laughs> I, I think i think he's a great backup a great insurance policy for aaron jones uh you still get you know for right now arguably the best quarterback in the nfl so give me the packers and a slight win against the vikings hey and by the way also i just looked back real quick um the vikings have not lost by more than six points this year and most of their losses i like 80 percent of them have been three points or less just, just a little. So, you know, they, they got some games they can win, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I also heard a stat with the Vikings this year. They're the only team that has led by seven points or more in each of their games. Wow. <laughs> they just got to finish. And, and they're under 500. Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, man. It's wild. That's the NFL, bro. You know, you always get those tricky teams. That's kind of like the Vikings are, and it's ironic because they played them last week, but they're kind of like the L.A. Chargers of the, of the East. Like always just close enough, just losing games, you know, kind of lose games, you know, in, in the weirdest of ways. You know, they're up the entire time and then they give it up. But uh, enough of the Vikings, man. We both got the Packers and I feel confident there. Talk to them. Next, we have the Miami Dolphins, who are three and seven on the year against the New York Jets. Forty five points is the over under. I want you to choose not choose. I want you to guess who is the favorite and by how much in this game. All right. Jets home. Awful team. Dolphins away. Awful Joe Flacco. Team. Joe Flacco is, is oh, a starter for the Joe Jets. Flacco is the starter for the Jets. Oh, that makes it interesting. Um, I'm going to say 
who, who the Dolphins? The Dolphins, and they just won. I'm going to say Dolphins are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Close, close, my man. Three-point favorite on the oh, road. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miami, they are 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games against the Jets. Miami also a 6-1 and straight up in their last seven games against the Jets overall. And the total has gone over in five of the New York Jets' last five games. They have given up so many points on the defensive end. I don't know if you saw that little beef with uh with Robert Sala. I don't know if you call it beef, but uh, Rex Ryan taking some shots at Robert Sala. So yeah, yeah, that was, that was funny, man. Um, ironically, the total has gone under in five of the New York Jets' last six games when they play the Miami Dolphins. So take it for what it's worth, fans. Kyle, let's pick the winner. So this one, um, a little little tidbit here. Um, Joe Flacco is also six in O versus Miami Dolphins. I am taking the New York Jets. Flag Daddy. You roll with the flag, flag daddy. Daddy, he's gonna come <laughs> out, he's gonna ball, he's gonna show I'm daddy of Miami. Uh, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and mm-hmm. I think he's gonna take the Jets to a dub here at home, shocking the world, baby. It's, I hate to follow right after you, but the Dolphins won last week, had a huge win. They get some extra days of rest and preparation. Uh, but Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl, people. Yeah. Like I know that was years ago when it was with the Ravens, and you know, he probably, you know, he doesn't get as much credit as as or maybe he gets a little more credit than what he did. I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe he he didn't have much to do with that actual Super Bowl win, but he had a great playoff run, if anyone remembers that. I, I vividly remember that. Yeah. Uh and, and him being a veteran quarterback at home against a team that the Jets, they actually feel like they can win this game. You cannot tell me that every Jets player doesn't feel like they can beat the Miami Dolphins. So they they feel confident enough that, hey, we beat the Bills that came into our crib. So why can't we beat the Dolphins? And this is a divisional game. So yeah, give me the give me the divisional home team three-point underdogs with the with the veteran quarterback although he's not very good but give me the veteran quarterback give me the jets and give me the give me the team that is is very needy for a win against a team that you know maybe sitting pretty sitting fat coming off of a great upset win so so give me the jets to have a nice little bounce back here talk to him hey, we gotta start picking different we got one game we got one yeah, game we'll, right now We'll get there. Don't you worry, my friend. Next one may be one of them. Uh, we have the New Orleans Saints on the road against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles, they are one and a half point favorites at home. 44 and a half is the over under. A lot of over under stats. Uh, majority of them say over. So I won't read them all. But Kyle, with that being said, let's pick the winner. All right. So um, who remind me again? Who's the Saints quarterback? Trevor Simeon. Simeon, right. Simeon. Simeon. Oh, man. This one is tough, tough, tough. Mm-hmm. I, I you talk about team. You, both Dude. of these teams, both of these teams are win, lose, win, lose, yes, win, lose. Man, yeah. For real. Um, I never go with the Saints, like, ever. I, no, I don't know. You why. never do. <laughs> I never, ever, ever, ever go with the Saints. You never do. Um, <laughs> maybe I still have some, uh, some uh, hate from that 09 Super Bowl, you know, but. I'm going to go with the Saints, man. I got to pick an away team. I'm going to go with the Saints on this one. Um, literally just for the, just like you said, they're so back and forth. I'm basically flipping a coin with this one. There's not even much reason. I'm just going to go with the Saints because I really never do. Yeah, I, I feel that. I respect that. Uh, I'm going to go the other way. Perfect. I told you this one, this one is the one I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Jalen Hurts, man. That, that's really a lot of it. I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts. Uh, I, I feel like. Trevor Simeon's the quarterback for the Saints. Now, they had a nice little almost comeback last week. So the Saints are going to play hard. But the Eagles, man, I I just I'm counting on Jalen Hurts doing something great and I'm counting on the Eagles. Hopefully, they'll be able to run the ball um like they've been doing the last few weeks. And I I just I just hope they start to rattle Trevor Simeon a little bit. You know, get after him maybe, you know, give him a couple extra hits, you know, really throw him off of his off of his spot. And, you know, with the home team, they're only a, a one and a half point favorite. You know, that that should give me a uh, cause for pause. But at the same time, I'm confident enough to feel like the Eagles can win this at home. Get two in a row. Uh, they won last week, right? Uh, Eagles. Yes, 
Yeah, they did. I'm almost positive they won last week. Yeah, 30 um, to 13 versus yep. Denver. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I like the Eagles. You got the Saints. So now we got we got a different rooting interest. So I like that for this matchup. Give me the Eagles. Talk to him. Next, uh, we have the this should be quick, man. Houston Texans versus the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are ten and a half point favorites at home. Forty five and a half is the over under. Tennessee, real quick, they are five and one against the spread in their last six games. The total has gone over in four of the Texans' last five games against Tennessee. However, the total has gone under in six of Houston's last seven games on the road. Let's pick the winner. Yeah, this one's real nice and simple. Tennessee Titans. Okay, cool. cool. Number two team. Come on now. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm going with. Uh, yeah, I'm going with the Titans too. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even going front. I'm going with the Titans too. Won't even try to be cute. Do they cover this number? No. They do not cover ten and a half, but they do win this game. Talk to them.